positive psychology is the concept that we can use positivity, gratefulness, kindness, optimism, hope, uh, positive human attributes in order to psychologically connect and motivate other humans. So that's the philosophy that we use. Uh, we kind of sub, we kind of are in a sub niche of positive psychology called appreciative inquiry. And that uses positively aligned questions, things like what's the best of your company? What's the best memory you've had in your company? Um, what's the best moment you've had with this product? It's um, positive questions that seek answers that align with hope, optimism, and the best of something. And the concept is, is that when you ask those questions and you start uh, using this framework, people have more energy and more powerful energy. Uh, so they start resonating with these positive messages. You start to see the messages that you're putting out into the marketplace being reflected back to you. And that's how you start to build these tribes that marketers are calling um, them now. People who take ownership of the language that you're using. That's all positive psychology. This is Eric Dick, the Robust Marketer, uh, back for a, another episode with some of the amazing people that I met throughout my uh, journeys in America, through Las Vegas and San Diego. Um, I wanted to just take some time. We sort of have some downtime now before our next event. And I just want to start going back to my roots of just having great conversations with super interesting people, eminently qualified in their field. I guess it's what I always do. Uh, but this one, we're not exactly selling a show, although you should all come to Barcelona. Um, so when I was in San Diego, I met a lot of amazing people, uh, and today we have Andrea Allen and Lena Ibrahim, who are the founders of Crossland Communication. I just, they, uh, they came to my event in San Diego, we met during happy hour, and we just like instantly went into some of the more interesting conversations I had my whole week there, um, and uh, we, we really dove into some really cool aspects of consumer psychology. And I know uh, Andrea is a big part of uh, masterminding groups with a lot of the big media buyers that I know because uh, because of uh, her insights, her and Lena's insights into consumer psychology. So that's what we're here to discuss today. Uh, welcome to The Robust Marketer. How you doing, Lena and Andrea? Hello, hello. Thank you for having us. We're doing really good. Awesome. It's good to see you again. We were last on some rooftop, I think, or <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> trudging through the, the yeah. San Diego yeah. evening. It was a very good time. <laughs> it was awesome. What a cool event. Some of the best uh, minds in the industry, newest strategies that are out there that are working. And uh, what was really cool too was not everything was just about Facebook advertising. It was just the best strategies to uh, really make your business grow. Uh, I learned a lot while I was there. It was awesome. Very cool. I think I've learned a lot from you. So I want to read what you wrote for sort of your bio here, just to really set the stage. Andrea and Lena have spent the past decade of their friendship mastering the most powerful tools of our age to activate visionary change makers around the world with positive psychology and Facebook ads. Nothing is impossible. And this is something I always think about with Facebook ads. It's just sort of how open it is to uh, everyone to, to get their ideas out. It's sort of considered a you know, this incredibly powerful, some would say dangerous tool. But what's really interesting about this time in history is the how democratic it is, or at least how it's all capitalist, but how it's open to everyone to do this. Yeah, I mean, I think that Facebook ads is the most accessible tool that we have to equalize power. Uh, in many ways, if you look back over the development of human civilization, through Facebook Ads Manager, we have more access to people and influence than king, kings of past that we read about uh, that have shaped our history and our future. Uh, so people who aren't learning it or trying to master it or really do something with it are asleep. Yeah, and this is a boat on something. And it's not just like reaching um, sleeping people. You're reaching people who are engaged, they're active in self-expression, they're involved. Um, it's interesting, and the, at the very least, <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing what you can do. It is, and it's easy in this industry to feel jaded or to feel suspicious or skeptical of, 
of you know in knowing all the the manipulation that goes on with it it's easy to see that side of it but it's almost like the whole positive side of it all the relationships that we foster with each other for instance in this amazing community of marketers and all the relationships i have with people all around the world uh that wouldn't be possible without this and it's so it's you sort of take that aspect of it for granted let alone the fact that you can make a, an incredible living with it <laughs> right <laughs> i mean uh you know all there's so many positives and negatives to all the tools that we have access to. So we could have conversations about the negatives and those are important conversations. And I think we've had a lot of conversation about the negatives of these tools in the past year, um, you know, with Cambridge Analytica and uh, the, the new wave of politics, uh, so many different negative things. But if you approach it positively uh, in many ways, positive psychology is so much more powerful than any other form of psychology in building momentum. So that's what we try to do is focus on the positives, try to build positive momentum and energy for people that are trying to make a positive impact in the world. And I think it's, um, it's a problem, especially in the digital space. Uh, it's really easy for a person to be critical and put an opinion out there. But um, what positive psychology does and, and how can we build momentum is, is taking that criticism or taking the grounds for conversation and making it actionable, um, which is a huge part of the impact of power there, I believe. And that's from the highlights that you've given me in, the, in our discussions. We're gonna In this discussion, we're going to get into some of those practical ways that people can uh, apply positive consumer psychology, measure positive consumer psychology within their businesses and leverage it to grow them. But first I want to just go back, you know, we're all about archetypes here at the Robust Marketer. So why don't you tell me the archetypal hero's journey uh, that you two, you know, that brought the, you two together and, and, and engage you in what you're doing? <laughs> oh boy, the hero's journey. Uh, I think the hero's journey is, is of course, uh, for us never over. Um, our journey, Started in uh, college. Yeah, it was uh, about a decade ago. About 10 years ago, we met on the speech and debate team and uh, really gave them hell for a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we traveled around the US and competed um, doing uh, debate, poetry, persuasive speeches. Um, after that, we kind of went our own ways, explored the world uh, in different industries. And then I kind of got sick of what kind of corporate America or society said we should do. And so we got together and we said, let's, let's use what we know to uh, make some crazy shit happen. And so we started on that journey about two years ago. And uh, we started working with uh, startups, manufacturing technology companies. Uh, they didn't, a lot of these B2B companies don't, know anything about what's going on in the newest parts of the digital world. And so when we tell them about uh, the power of Facebook advertising or what's going on with Snapchat, uh, it can be mind blowing for them. And so we work with those kind of companies and, and that's where we've been. Very cool. And we take it totally for granted. It's funny, like I was talking to someone in PR and they're like, there's a lot of people that still read paper magazines and <laughs> You know, to these people, this stuff, you know, running a, a boosted post is just absolute witchcraft. Yeah. You know? And we're like, yeah. don't boost. Yeah. <laughs> don't boost. I like it. So you, I like this because I've come at it from the affiliate standpoint. So, you know, scrapping, solopreneur, figuring it out. You guys have sort of more, you, 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 you know, really grabbed a hold of the psychology and, and have brought the, the ad techniques to that higher level. What's that been like? Like, to talk a little, a little bit about some of your wins in the space working with these bigger brands and, and, and pulling stuff off for them. Because you obviously your reputation has been like, you guys, you've just been absolutely crushing it, just like you did on the drinks side of things. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. We, yeah, what uh, cool things we've done. So one of our, our favorite stories is um, a urban agriculture company that's uh, on the forefront of changing the world. They do indoor agriculture. They um, are opening up the world, uh, the United States' first fully automated robotic indoor farm. Um, we first met them. They have this incredible team. They're so value aligned, uh, but they didn't really have a message that could resonate with the masses because it was so scientific. So we took them through uh, a process that uses appreciative inquiry and positive psychology to cull out the core 
support their message. And they used our work in order to launch into this huge PR media burst before their facility launched. Uh, and so with that, you know, they were able to reach investors and secure their next level of uh, funding. You know, $50 million in investment can help them spread across the whole world. Uh, so that's what we're able to do for these companies that are maybe in a different space. You know, um, we did we started with e-commerce. We a lot of our clients are e-com, they're lead gen, uh, and we love that. And that's where we learn the those really cool techniques. You know, shotgun and surf and all the stuff Tim Bird teaches. Um, but these other companies that are trying to do these big things, they don't know how to use those strategies. Uh, so that's that's what we help them with. Very cool. And the, the messaging, obviously, you know, you can you can put as many dollars as you want into Facebook ads, but if you're not saying something that resonates or that's truthful or that's honest, you know, this is something that, that I found. Like I've run a ton of Facebook ads with iStack Training. We've won we've run with lots of different agencies, but uh, but still, you know, when, when I when I go back to the very beginning, when I wasn't even really using tact, I wasn't using the tactics, these bidding tactics necessarily, but I was just I was writing every single ad. And, and I sort of had an internal logic to how, how it was working. And those are still some of our highest performing ads that we've ever had. Right. Um, and so I think it really, I think tactics are hugely important. And they're obviously like gas on the fire when you have a, an amazing uh, message and an amazing product. But, but it really, especially if you can really hone down the message to something that just really strikes. And I assume that's something that, that you do a lot with your clients. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, nailing down the messaging, um, it's such a hard it's it takes away so much from just using that phrase because re really what you do is you're digging into like the core of what something is so leaning into your strengths um using positive psychology um to like truly communicate what you like something that sustains i think we as business owners ask us that question a lot like how do i create something that sustains um and you know something that has a meaningful core that can um that can be easily transferred across platforms um, and speaks to a, like a very clear community is really where a lot of that impact comes in, which I think don't, people uh, people don't understand quite the magnitude of that. It's really easy to get lost in like the numbers. There's so many people in the digital sphere. So like, who are you talking to? Why? And what are you telling them? <laughs> it's huge. These are big questions to ask. Yeah, I, I feel like in the e-commerce space, there's a big divide between people that have that and people that don't. And if you don't have that, you can make you still do really, really well. You can, you know, you can, you, you, but but you, it won't it won't be something that probably sustains in the same way, or it won't, and it certainly won't be, and it won't be something that lives beyond your ad spend in the way you want it to. You know, if you if you want to just not have to always pump ad dollars into things, if you want something to grow on its own and open up, you know, like look at like with, with what Josh Elizeche is doing in, in a way, right? So he's He's, you know, I'm sure he's hammering his Facebook ads really well, but he's also just making these these giant leaps with big single partnerships that are totally yeah. in the game, and that's because he's got to that core yeah. of his messaging. It feels like well, for me, that I'm being at the event in San Diego. That was something that was really beautiful that I saw like coming through over and over again. That these high high ad spend, data driven humans are coming out with these stats. I remember uh, Van uh, saying that over 30 percent of usage on Snapchat was for creativity. Like that's huge. It speaks volumes about the future. Um, learning and leaning into the creative space is just going to be huge. I mean, when it comes to sus like sustenance specifically, but also creating um, something that's like meaningful and lasting in a space that you know it's easy to drown out in. You know, um, Max Fenn talks a lot about the difference between uh, the brands that are you know just making it happen, maybe you know making some profit, and the brands that are really going to crush it. And one of the things he says that makes the difference, you know, a lot of other people say too, brand voice. How do you get that voice? And so uh, in addition to a bunch of other things that people do in Facebook ads, I think where we are different in this community is we use a very scientific proven process to figure out brand voice, brand personality, and the core of what your company or your message should be. And it's not that hard, even though it's scientific, there's a lot of little things you could do uh, to immediately start doing these things and slowly pivot your company. You don't have to go through some huge brand engagement to start making these changes. 
You don't have to take ayahuasca, although it might help. I wanted to start a little bit earlier too. Let's just talk about positive psychology. I think I think I know what that is, but let's let's just go right back to to the essence of what of what you do and talk about what positive psychology specifically is in this context. Yeah. So positive psychology is the concept that we can use positivity, gratefulness, kindness, optimism, hope, uh, positive human attributes in order to psychologically connect and motivate other humans. So that's the philosophy that we use. Uh, we kind of sub we kind of are in a sub niche of positive psychology called appreciative inquiry. And that uses positively aligned questions, things like what's the best of your company? What's the best memory you've had in your company? Um, what's the best moment you've had with this product? It's um, positive questions that seek answers that align with hope, optimism, and the best of something. And the concept is, is that when you ask those questions and you start uh, using this framework, people have more energy and more powerful energy. Uh, so they start resonating with these positive messages. You start to see the messages that you're putting out into the marketplace being reflected back to you. And that's how you start to build these tribes that marketers are calling um, them now. People who take ownership of the language that you're using. That's all positive psychology. Very interesting. So let's talk a little bit about some of the tactical things that people can do to start honing in on this process. There's a lot already there. Um, it a deep dive, a deep, deep dive in what people are saying to you is a really, really good place to start. Um, pay attention to what people say um, that is positively aligned with your impact, what it is you've done for them, um, just themes that are present and how people are reflecting on like what your services or your products do for them. That's that's a big one. Um, this is already a lot there for you to learn about. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you have um, you have video testimonies, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So if you uh, if someone has a business like yours and they do uh, video testimonies, they can take those video testimonies and transcribe them. We use Rev.com, um, but you know you could use your VA or whatever your system is, and you transcribe it. And then you look at that as a, as a set unto itself. And what you're looking for are um, strong statements, cultural expressions, uh, sometimes jargon. Um, idiomatic expressions are like cultural language that can't be translated easily. Uh, stuff like that can set a brand on fire. So the more um, epiphanies you see, yeah. Uh, strong language, cultural language, stuff like that. That's what you want to pull out of there. So you can get that from testimonies. You can get it from comments. Um, one process that we use uh, is called the positive feedback system. And uh, we have clients go back into their databases and ask past uh, clients, past customers, past leads, whatever it is, uh, a series of questions and then use those questions to constantly create new content that reflects the language of your best customers. I like that. that that's such a that's such a good idea. And so that's really what we're doing. We're, we, we now we're, we're getting a Google Sheet made right now that has all of our testimonials all transcribed um, and we're going to do an eyeball test on it. We also have a data analysis guy within the iStack company. Hey. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do like a big word cloud. We're gonna have a oh, whole like, have a oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we, maybe we could actually publish that. We might be able to do some of the you know that that would be a good 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 piece to put out there too to see all the positive things that people are saying about yes. us. But I'm excited to go through this process because I think I, I can see it. Uh, yeah, I can see it being just hugely effective. And, and so specifically, you talked about so idiomatic phrases, so so things that that can't be translated. But so how do they act in cutting costs down? Is it just because it creates a, it's just like influencer marketing, it creates a shorthand between people so that they understand? And I, I think there's also something um, limbic happening, mm -hmm. something in that part of the brain that's emotional that we yeah. don't understand. It's shared expression, shared meaning through the symbol of language as, as, as a collection of brains. And it creates out groups. Right. So if you recognize a phrase, 
you know that those are your people and you know yeah. who's not your people. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have to bring up the most powerful communicator of our era, uh, one way or the other, probably not positive psychology, but I, I think of Trump. I, I think of, at net, I guess it's probably your, your like Darth Vader, maybe because <laughs> of how negative he is. Like the guy just railed on a deceased veteran for, uh, for a couple hours yesterday, apropos to nothing. Uh, well, I, I think of him as a communicator and I think about how he came in and I'm kind of stealing from a guy named Scott Adams who wrote Dilbert who analyzed, he's like a Trump translator and how he came in with all these like hard, these physical phrases, these phases that, that evoked a physical image. Uh, yeah. the wall, they're chopping off heads, you know, all these sort of things that, that he used to be super evocative of very tangible, very visual sort of phrases. And I feel like he's, people say he's dumb. But I, but I think he is some kind of word wizard because of the impact, like the way his words land on people. Absolutely, yeah. I think that, um, you know, there's absolutely a spectrum of where people are, right? So there's positive psychology, yeah. and then I don't know what the opposite is. I probably should, but I, I'm so good. I'd imagine based on fear. It'd be based on your, it is what Trump is. Based on fears. Yeah. Yeah. So I would uh, anticipate that um, there's a lot of those themes there. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It goes to the question of like like sustenance now. Uh, I think it's something we can look at through a historical perspective if you'd like, uh, but I think fear as a, as, a, as a mechanism of persuasion or control or connection um, doesn't sustain. And I just don't mm. think it's, uh, so I understand that. And it just can be powerful, it can be powerful in moments or collections of moments. But yeah, uh, kind of, you know. Well, definitely powerful. <laughs> uh, but, but we're, and I'm so interested for what's going to happen. I'm not an American, but I follow it so closely. I'm very interested in what's going to happen in the next couple of years with the collection. There's, the, the field is so crazy. Let's, let's not go too far off the rails here. Right. Um, yeah. So I, I wanted to, what, what, what else do we have here? We have some other interesting facts. So, so basically you're saying that you, by using these phrases, you can literally cut your costs just because things are going to resonate more. It literally has a bottom line impact when you're able to connect more, obviously. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so I, if you just look at your, your newsfeed or if you uh, pop in the ad buyers group and scroll for a while what the, some of the top ad posts are, they're almost all testimonies. Uh, so that's because it works, right? So if you take the testimonies to that next level and you take them away from that narrative storytelling part, that's really that um, top of funnel piece and you move it into something that is more actionable, more value aligned, more idiomatic and cultural, then you're creating this connection and motivating action. So if you can do those at the same time, if you can motivate action through value, then you can drive down your costs because people are sharing, they're commenting, they're engaging, and you're creating a, a better relevance score, even though that's going right. away, but higher quality, higher engagement. And sorry, you're saying this by, g- give me something practical associated with that. So like you're, you're talking about not using testimonials as the, as the top of the funnel. You're talking about, cause you know, um, framing the testimonials in a specific way or just using content. Like I know Van does this, Van does this extremely well with his post where he's like, which one of these trucks is speaks to you? Which yeah. one of the trucks do you want more? It's very simple, but it's asking a question for people to identify with one thing or another, and it's and it's creating that action. Uh, is can you give me any other examples of ways people have sort of done this well? Mm-hmm. So uh, one really fun way to do it is to just ask questions, kind of like what Van's doing, uh, but I prefer to do it uh, more broadly instead of giving an or. Um, typically my goal is to get them to do a long form answer in the comments. Uh, so you ask the question, one of the best questions that works literally every time, try it today if you want, is, um, what's the best advice you've ever been given? You can put a little context on it. Maybe what's the best advice a Facebook advertiser has given you, or what's the best advice a chef has given you or whatever your business is. Um, typically that blows up. It's positive. So it's positive psychology asks about the best. It gives people a sense of action because they have to give advice or share advice. 
And then that creates this sense of community and connection. You're also generating content for that you can use later on to keep that community alive. Does that give you a little more context, understanding of how you use it? Yeah, that really does. And, and even just thinking about like when I'm asked to give advice or when I'm asked, it, it, you're, you're being asked to cont like contextualize your own life in a way or look at it objectively. And, I, and that just for, that's such an interesting process for people. And when you're able to crystallize something from yourself like that and put it out there, you're, it's just going to create an affinity with the person right. that, that out there in a way, right? It's rooted, yes. it's rooted in values. It's rooted in values because we're not talking. Um, yeah, that's basically the whole purpose of using the positive, the positive framing. Very cool. Um, so what does, so, so your clients, so you're doing across, I don't think I fully understood this, but you're doing across the spectrum uh, services for clients. You are managing, uh, you know, obviously the, the, the top line communication. You're also like, you're both, you're also buying ads, just like ad buying like maniacs. Are you like, what's, what is your team like? <laughs> We have a process that we take people through. Um, I am, I'm an activator. I, uh, my strength is not consistency. Uh, my goal is to go into a company, help them understand themselves better, help their team become activated, train their team, show them what the best looks like, and then help them emulate that until they can run on their own. So my goal is never to keep a, a client no, on for yeah. more than about seven months is our goal. Self-managing teams are, it's, it's one, of the, one of the biggest uh, phrases that keeps coming back every single time. It's, one of, it's something we really value a lot. And teaching, um, teaching teams to be self-managing is just super impactful and powerful. I like this because, you know, talking to Max, talking to a lot of people who run media buying agencies, there's this sense of like, you know, you can be let go at any time. You can, you know, where it's interesting to hear your process, whereas your goal is to get people through this lifetime, you know, this seven, this seven months, maybe or less if they can if they can do it, I guess. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, typically we um we do a consulting process first. It's a four week process. And then from there, we manage fully end to end every single piece of the plan to realize their goals for the first 90 days. And then we hand it off to their team for the next 90 days and train them. Uh, and then sometimes the uh, that's the end of the relationship. And sometimes they stay in ongoing training or um, quarterly, biannual, or some kind of consulting basis. Very cool. So, so help me understand. So you're going to these corporations, you're helping them with their message, but you're also say exposing them to the shotgun method, for instance, and saying, here's literally the best. Yeah. Like, very good. You're teaching them on how to do that. Mm -hmm. Give them, or just giving them Tim's video. Or just yeah. it so many times. We have online courses. Yeah, and we walk them through them. Uh, so we have online courses that they uh, enroll in, and then also sometimes they do one to one or group consulting with small teams. Very cool. It's fun, it and I think so it, the model makes sense for the agency world these days yeah. because w my belief, and maybe it's because I'm not the best at at doing the work of it every day. I'm not a manager. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I I don't know why anyone wouldn't want to own that inside of their company or build that into their team. Right. Um, these days, you know, anyone can run it if you can be trained to do it and you, your strengths say that you can. Uh, but also, I will say that we never go into a team and, and uh, have them do things that they can't do on their own. Right. So, Part of our consulting process, oddly enough, includes team assessments. We do DISC assessments, Gallup strength assessments, personality assessments uh, before we train anyone. So we really try to make it integrative and uh, build marketing into the company. Right. Interesting. Here's a question for you. What is a what is for all people, I, one of the biggest questions we get are from people that run agencies or they're, they're, they're people that have made a lot of money figuring out how to run digital ads, but they're having trouble step hiring. They're having trouble stepping aside from what they're doing and hiring, trusting someone enough to hire them, to train them in the, these, these arts essentially. But I wanted to ask like, what are, what kind of personality traits are people looking for most when they want to hire a media buyer? Ooh, that's good. Um, I think, consistency is a big one uh, so okay when we hire we are 
I'm looking for value alignment with my company for one. Um, so that's usually first. Uh, the second one is internal motivation and character. And then the third one is if your job is to buy media every Every day, does your personality reflect the strength that you can pay attention every day? If not, maybe you should be in a different boat. I like it. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm. When you were talking about yourself as an activator, uh, Lena, are you an activator as well? I'm interested in this. In these. In that uh, nomenclature. Like, is there mm -hmm. is there a spectrum of people in that world? Like, you're the activate. Like, if you're the Justice League, not sorry, the Avengers. Okay. Not the Justice League, uh, you know, you're the activator. What else do we have in that like pantheon of um, if I would quantify, if I would say, I would say I'm a strategist um, when it okay. comes to my strengths. Um, but these are, it's all rooted in actual like strengths and, and, and uh, like a lot of mine are highly in, like intellectual. So it makes sense that I'll go to like strategy and activation. I There's some that are community like building. That. So some of them are more connection based. Yeah. Like, um, I'm, I'm a communicator. Okay. One is, um, so for a media buyer, you'd probably want an executor. Right. So we're, we're talking in the language of the actual Gallup strengths. Mm -hmm. So if someone's curious about the language, um, you can look this up. There's 34 strengths. There's four categories of the strengths. The categories are relator, executor, strategist, and relator, executor, strategist. Oh, what's the last one? It, um, it's not me, obviously. No. <laughs> okay. Right. So there's four categories, 34 uh, strengths. If you look at the makeup, the genetic makeup of our team, we're like 47% on uh, strategy and, um, oh, activator. Uh, activator was the last one. Literally was you. Yeah. <laughs> Forget like, myself. Me. It was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. So if, if, like, first of all, if people, like, I think there's probably a lot of people that run companies. They should probably, like, they should drop you, you, you a note and say, hey, you know, what does this process look like? But if people wanted to, to get into this, with, you know, in their own companies, are those, those are the tools you'd recommend, the Gallup Strength Finder? Um, and if you, like, what are the entry-level ways that people can start, like, assessing their team this way? Mm-hmm. The personality assessments, um, you can use 16 personalities. It's really accessible. Um, that's at 16personalities.com. Yeah. Um, so that's really great for personality assessments. The disc assessments. Um, uh, Tony, Tony Robbins, Robbins has a free disc assessment that you can use. Um, Gallup Strengths Finder. Mm -hmm. There's also a, there's a paid disc assessment that's a lot more valuable. Um, you have to have a certified coach for that. It starts at about three grand per team member but it's incredible um, but if you want the free one that one's cool too uh, yeah those are the those are the primary ones that we use nice very cool if people want to get in touch with you how would they go about doing it you can find us on Facebook you can add me you can add Lena we're in the ad buyers group you can check out our website at crosslandcom.com um, and we're we're around we're happy to help uh, we really love talking about uh, changing the world. If you've got a brand out there that's trying to really make a difference in the world, um, we're here to help you guys. And if you're just trying to change your world through your small business or your e-commerce brand, we're happy to share these strategies with you guys too. Absolutely. And uh, the approach that we use is available to the public, appreciative inquiry. Um, there's manuals and, and things like that. So you could always do a session yourself or with your own team using the manuals that are out there uh, to download. Very cool, super helpful. Um, you're, I, if people have questions, uh, just jump on this thread because you'll, you'll, you'll monitor the thread and any questions that people have specifically, yeah. uh, jump on this in the ad buyers group. The big question is, will you come to Barcelona? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hope everyone's in Barcelona. Why would you not come to Barcelona? I think that's the right answer. So yeah, July 10th and 11th, we'll have the website up in a couple weeks. Uh, and everyone who's anyone's going to be there. We're expecting like 500. It's going to be crazy. Yes. Yes. I know that um, many of the everyone's who are anyone were in San Diego. And so if there's any kind of... Uh, <laughs> bigger version of that, then you got to be there, guys. <laughs> yeah.
Nice. Well, fantastic. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on today. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you again soon. Next time we'll talk about the century of the self. <laughs> Have a thank good one, you. Eric. Okay. Bye. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Thanks to my guests, Lena and Andrea. Uh, they were a pleasure to meet and I'm really excited for using some of the techniques that they have mentioned to help me better understand uh, the iStack training customer base and the, the words that, uh, that that resonate with, with all these amazing marketers and entrepreneurs that I get to work with. So uh, yeah, thanks very much. Thanks very much for to Tim Bird. Uh, if you're not on AdLeaks, you should be joining AdLeaks because uh, obviously, the Ad Buyers Group, we do our these, these uh, live streams in the Ad Buyers Group, but Ad Leaks has a, a lot more amazing features, a lot more amazing content, uh, huge amounts of engagement, and a ton of content as well. So make sure that you join them. Thanks again, and we'll see you again next week. I've got a couple more coming up next week. Cheers.